One on uh, Indian Economic Development, Canada. Mm. Mm. Oh, we do a bit of work with Phil Fontaine. Oh, nice. and um, on economic development. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It, we haven't connected yet. The Manitoba scene, or yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We haven't managed to connect. Just busy guy. These Keep days, chasing right? each other around. Yeah. 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 But I, I was going to phone him this morning. So you, yeah. you have to watch the noise, dear, okay? Yeah. You want to say something? You're going to ask me a question oh, before okay. I answer? Or? Yeah, okay, I'll ask I'll you. just shoot. Yeah. No, I'll ask you. As soon as Wendy lets us know that we're... Do I look at Victor or do I look at the camera? You look at me. I look at you. Yeah, everything we're shooting here is off, off camera, so... Yeah. Again, we try to be consistent. Okay. Okay? Okay, John. Um, what is Choices? Who is it represent? Choices is a coalition for social justice which represents a variety of groups from trade unions to social action groups in the city, uh, Aboriginal groups, women's groups, uh, people representing those on social welfare, uh, church groups. We have a, a wide cross-section of Winnipeg society. Okay, Choices is a member of uh, the Coalition for Fairness. What, what role does, the co does uh, Choices play in that coalition? We are one among many members, and uh, we see our role as working with the other members to um, further our own particular uh, interests, which are uh, a strong, efficient uh, public service. And insofar as uh, those aims uh, coincide with ours, then we work very closely with them. Do you have concerns about uh, the status uh, of the public service these days in Manitoba? Uh, yes, we do. Not just here, but also nationally. The, the public service is under great attack uh, by both the federal and provincial governments. Uh, we feel that the, um, the net effect of this is that the quality of life in Manitoba is going to deteriorate, is deteriorating. Uh, several very vulnerable groups are particularly affected by these cutbacks, as of course are the families of public sector workers. And um, we feel that there are different ways of organizing our society which would avoid these kinds of uh, social problems that are being created by layoffs and cutbacks. Uh, why don't you just make a general statement to me about what effect you think the uh, attacks on the public service uh, are having now on the people in, say, in, in, in your coalition, community groups that you represent? Well, there, there have been several attacks on inner city services. And of course, th those services are designed uh, for the, the um, perhaps the, the least well-off section of Manitoba society at least one of the least well-off sections. And um, so in, in certain critical areas, for instance, services to, to immigrants, uh, services to uh, single mothers, uh, the cutbacks have been quite severe. Access to post-secondary education. Um, and we feel that all of this is avoidable. Uh, it is pushing problems onto the weakest sections of society problems that could be dealt with, uh, we feel, in more enlightened ways. So, um, the point of view of the person on the street, what, why is this a problem, this particular approach the government has to targeting the most vulnerable society? Well, it, it's a problem um, because we believe that there is a, a moral issue involved, that where choices have to be made, um, we feel that those sections of society who are better able to, to, to uh, cope uh, should bear the burden of those, those adjustments, if indeed they need to be made. Uh, the particular approach of both the federal and the provincial governments is to, is to target um, those groups which are politically weakest. We see that with, with UIC, we see it with uh, welfare adjustments, we see it with uh, post-secondary, we see it with uh, the attacks on um, uh, those drawing on psychological uh, uh, counselling. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these uh, services have been cut back. And um, we feel that this is not right. What, what about the uh, Bill 70 and the, the wage freeze? 
and the taking away of collective bargaining rights. Is that a concern to the coalition? Itself? It is a concern, and we, we were very active uh, around this issue. We participated fully with the unions uh, in the hearings on Bill 70. And we did so because we feel that, that this is a major infringement on democratic rights as we know them. In some cases, collective agreements had already uh, been reached. Deals had been struck, sometimes after lengthy strikes. And the effect of this bill is to roll them back. And uh, we feel that this destroys the credibility of the bargaining process. It also effectively outlaws strikes. And it withdraws from a fairly significant section of the working population basic rights and freedoms. And again, it's a recognition that the government is not able to deal with the, uh, the issue of uh, negotiating. Mm. And uh, we expect better of, of our government. Okay. What about the uh, economics of it? I mean, a lot of people feel that uh, public service wages are cause of recession. In fact, a number of workers feel that way too. What, what do you think? Do you have a position on that? Well, there's a very strong propaganda element uh, in explaining the problems that, that Canada is facing. And one of them, of course, is that uh, the deficit is, cause, is the cause of all our problems, and that civil service salaries are the cause of the deficit. Now, this is, is simply uh, not so. If one looks at um, the, the major expenditures in the federal budget, the major the major cause of the deficit in terms of increases in recent years has in fact been high interest rates. And so one would have to look at why we have high interest rates. Why do we have a high interest rate, high dollar policy in Canada? And the answer to that is not to be found uh, in wage rates. It's to be found in, in economic problems and political problems which are much more subtle than that. Uh, the um, other areas of expenditures, the major areas of expenditures are uh, health care. And uh, the major components there are, of course, doctor salaries, which are not covered by Bill 70. So one has to be very careful of these simplistic approaches, which have a lot of appeal, because there is a stereotype of, of the civil servant as being someone who is uh, overpaid and underworked. And that's a stereotype which, which in my experience, uh, is simply uh, incorrect. Are you saying it's just a, a propaganda public relations effort going after public service? It's, I think it's a, it's a basic conservative ideology to look for easy answers to fairly uh, complicated problems. And of course, the bottom line in all of this is to attempt to influence private sector wages by bringing down public sector wages. And this is really what it's all about. What it's all about is to attempt to raise profit rates at, at the expense of workers. And to do this by attacking not just wage rates, but also the social wage, expenditures on health care, Medicare, education, etc. Mm -hmm. And this really is what the conservative agenda is all about, and that is what Choices uh, was designed to fight. Now, um, conservatives and corporations would say that they need to have that break on uh, social costs so they can be competitive in the world, uh, uh, world market. What, what do you think about that argument? Well, uh, this is a familiar argument. Um, the relationship between productivity and uh, wages and competitiveness is really what we have to be looking at. And there is an argument that says that uh, Canadian capital has not been um, as dynamic, it hasn't been as adventurous, hasn't been as creative as it ought to have been in order to compete uh, with the Japanese. We, we know that the uh, German economy is quite strong and quite competitive. We know the Swedish economy is, is quite strong and quite competitive. And they have uh, much higher levels of social programming than we do. They also have, in some cases, higher wages. So clearly the, the issue is a more complex, again. And uh, I don't believe that cutting wages and cutting back on basic social services, which we deem important, is the best way to improve productivity. And what we have to look at much more carefully is this complex interrelationship between uh, competitiveness and productivity. We also have to look, for instance, at the exchange rate. One of the major causes of our lack of competitiveness is the overvalued exchange rate. And the mm. question is, why do we have that? Mm -hmm. And the Conservative government has so far not given us a very adequate answer. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying, but if you're speaking to a rank-and-file person, <laughs> this is a real challenge. Is there is there a way of talking about uh, an alternative to the, you know, the way that the government talks about competitiveness. Is there a way of, 
articulating an, alter an alternative so a rank and file person could understand that something about yeah. there being another there being another way you don't have to buy into the model the okay. way the government's defined okay. it or yeah yeah. You know what I'm um, at? yeah no i see what you're saying you want to shut the camera off for a second and think about shall that? we try it can yeah. you tape yeah can you roll it yeah mm -hmm. well what we have to ask is what determines competitiveness and i think most people would agree that that um, competitiveness is a combination is a result of a combination of the kind of equipment that uh, people have to work with. The uh, efficiency of workers uh, with any given piece of equipment and um, the ability to, to move goods around uh, fairly quickly and efficiently. And then finally, in terms of international competitiveness, there is the whole issue of the exchange rate at which you sell goods, the price at which you sell goods in foreign currency. And if one looks at experience in Canada, Real wages uh, have, in fact, been falling for some time in many sectors, and, and, and the output per worker relative to the to wage paid, or cost per unit produced, has been falling. And um, this is so in, in, in many, many sectors, including, in fact, the public sector. One could argue that the efficiency of public sector workers has risen uh, in many areas over the past few years, and we, we, see, we can measure that in the case of the city, for instance. Um, we know that our transportation system is under tremendous attack. We know that we're dismantling a national transportation system. We know that um, um, the uh, railway system is, is, uh, is being undermined. We know that transportation systems are being made more competitive, uh, which in effect uh, means that they are being Americanized. And on the exchange rate side, what we find is that the, the dollar has been very high, which means that, that um, our goods in the U.S. are quite expensive relative to, to what they used to be and relative to, to American goods. The question is, why is that? Why has why the government pursued a policy of high interest rates and high dollar, which has had the effect of destroying much of our uh, manufacturing industry and, of course, our tourism industry? So that the issue of, of competitiveness uh, has to be looked at from the point of view of each one of these, and sector by sector. And uh, it's not at all clear that, that any simplistic formulation that, that says, well, you know, high wages and uh, high social benefits are the, are, the, are the cause, especially when you consider that there's a relationship between efficiency of the rate at which workers work and what they get paid and how, how healthy they are. So I think that, that what we have to avoid is, is buying into the conservative agenda, which reduces fairly complicated problems to a series of simplistic anti-labor slogans. That's a good phrase. OK. I uh, thought you'd like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> further on this issue of competitiveness, what about this concept of uh, competitive poverty you now hear labor talk about, which is that uh, you know, capital, wherever it is in the world, says we have to lower our our social and economic cost mm -hmm. to be competitive. So what you have happening around the world is that cost, you know, the cost of labor is being lowered everywhere, and living standards are suffering. Is is, is that a concern at all? It, it's certainly uh, a concern, in that, uh, of course, the basic reason for that is that capital is mobile. Capital has no allegiances to any city, any province, any state, and therefore it will seek the highest profits. Um, it's not simply a matter of taking capital to the place where wages are lowest because productivity is a factor, security is a factor, risk is a factor and Canada has a very uh, positive environment in terms of a disciplined, highly educated uh, workforce, in terms of a stable, uh, relatively stable political environment, um, fairly stable financial tax institutions and so on. So Canada has a lot of attractions apart from a very, very, uh, of course, very rich resource base. It has a lot of attractions for capital and um, these would militate against any quick flights of capital. I mean, the, the key, of course, is, to, is somehow to, to hold capital socially responsible to workers and to the people of Canada. And that is very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, let me see where else I'm yeah. uh, You know what I want from you is a, is a statement which goes something like this. Uh, Choices is a community-based uh, group which represents da-da-da-da-da, uh, and uh, we're supporting the 
Coalition for Fairness mm -hmm. um, because we're not happy with what the attack the government has yeah. uh, launched against workers. Those three thoughts sort of in one... Just run them by me again, it's a bit early for me. Okay, what, co what choice is this? Social Action Group. Social Action, community-based mm -hmm. community social action group. Uh, what was the second thing I said? Oh, we're involved in the Coalition for Fairness because we don't like the attack upon the public sector and our living standards and the taking away of rights and right. that sort right. of thing. Right. Okay. Should we just try Set that? Set up. Okay. Choices is a community-based social action group which has very wide representation from across the community. And we have chosen to um, support the um, attempt to to withdraw Bill 70 because we feel this is attack not only on the basic democratic rights of workers but also on their living standards and indirectly on the standard of public sector service and on social services provided by the state to the community. And will choices be... Uh, what do I want next? Uh, this might not be fair to ask you what form that participation will take in the future. I guess that's part of uh, what the coalition is going to decide. Mm. They haven't quite decided yet. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's not right. fair to yeah. ask you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe a, just a general call to arms and a statement about how we're going to keep on yeah. fighting with with this coalition to make sure. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, we, we don't see the fight against Bill 70 as being a, a one-off event. The, the hearings were very important, the, the rally was very important and we participated fully in both of those. But we anticipate, uh, unfortunately, that the, the fight uh, against attacks on public sector unions is, is going to be a protracted one and Choices expects to stay with that fight and to, to um, help in any way it can to restore some sanity to the uh, public sector employment process. Okay. Right. Let's stop the camera for a second. I'm just having. Okay. okay. Are you rolling, Wendy? Mm -hmm. Choices believes that there are alternatives to, to this particular way of, of attacking the public finances. We feel that um, the provincial Conservative government has concluded that there's only one way of dealing with the budget. We have shown over the last 12 months that there are any number of ways of, of dealing with, with fiscal problems and we designed our own budget which protected public sector employment, which provided for an increase in public sector efficiency and which expanded important social programs. We also demonstrated that that budget was sustainable over a four year period and um, over that period of time the tax burden and share of government spending would actually uh, be phased down slightly. So we believe that we have demonstrated that there are more humane alternatives, that there are more sensible alternatives, and there are more politically sustainable alternatives than the neoconservative attack on public sector services and public sector unions. Even within the context of the so-called economic crisis and the recession that the Conservatives talk about? Exactly. I mean, we factored into our budget the um, most recent economic forecasts of what was likely to happen in Manitoba. In fact, we use pretty much the same economic forecast as the provincial government. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a strong point mm -hmm. too, I think. Campaign against it. This one is more is more general. It Have you got talk. footage of the rally? Of what? The rally. Oh, absolutely. Have you got oh. the music there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, how, you know, there's copyright issues with that music. I'm sure we can flip in a few seconds here and there, but we can't use too much. But yeah, we no, shot we paid extensively. Paid yeah. Limited, eh? yeah. You can use it sort of in a documenting sense, maybe 30 or so yeah. seconds, but that's beyond yeah, that. They weren't cheap. Well, it was like 870 or something. Yeah.
got six. Can Selena say kill five? Yeah. 